known universally as the Tiger Tank. The Sonderkraft Fahrerzeug 182 or Panzerkampfwagen 6 has gone down in military history legend as one of Germany's most feared battlefield weapons. Now this reputation may or may not be fully deserved, but it has certainly captured the imagination of historians, armour fans, movie and model makers alike for decades. And this video is no exception. I have been captivated by the Tiger I for as long as I can remember, and because of this, I thought the Big Cap deserved to go first in my new Top 10 series on all things World War II vehicles. And before any keyboard tank commanders rip this Top 10 apart like an 88mm shell going through enemy armour at 1000 metres, it's all based on my own opinions and readings, but if you do disagree, get stuck into the comments and let me know. At number 10, the instruction manual for new tank commanders was as innovative as some of the features on the tank itself. It was understood that lengthy technical manuals didn't hold the interest of the young men expected to crew and fight these new weapons, so with the blessing of General August Heinz Guderian, the very same Guderian that pioneered Germany's development of armoured warfare in the 1930s and became the father of Blitzkrieg, allowed the manual to contain cartoons and humour as well as images of young ladies to hold their interest in their new weapon system. Known as the Tiger Feeble, it proved so successful that the German forces adopted this approach for other similar manuals. At number 9, the cost. The Tiger, being somewhat cutting edge for 1942, came with a hefty price tag for the Reich. During the war, each tank cost roughly 250,000 Reichmarks to manufacture. Now in today's currency, that roughly translates to 2.7 million dollars or 2.1 million pounds. Now to put this into perspective, the modern Challenger 2, in use by the armoured units of the British Army, cost roughly 4.2 million, so the big cap wasn't cheap. It also used a lot of materials to build one Tiger. Roughly 21 105mm howitzers could be built for the same amount of steel used to make one Tiger 1 tank. At number 8, it wasn't easy to move around. For the Tiger to be transported on Germany's rail network, it needed two, yes, two sets of tracks. The normal set of tracks was 725 mm wide. The tracks used for transportation on rail cars around Germany was 520 mm wide. Switching between the two was time consuming and required not only the removal of tracks, but some of the road wheels as well, leading to more time, manpower, and the potential for mechanical issues to arise. It was also a fat cap weighing in at anywhere between 54 and 57 tonnes as production models developed throughout its lifespan. This meant that it was often too heavy for a lot of the bridges, meaning water obstacles really were just that for the big cap. Unlike the Sherman, which never really exceeded 38 tonnes, meaning it was perfectly happy crossing the bridging equipment used by the Allies, which was rated to 40 tonnes. At number 7, between July 1942 and August 1944, a mere 1,347 Tiger 1s were produced. Compare this with the Sherman, which had over 50,000 made between 1942 and 1945. Despite the Sherman being nearly 50 times more numerous than the Tiger, I can't help but feel it's the Tiger that has the more notorious reputation following in a post-war years. At number 6, two German companies competed for the contract that would eventually become the Tiger tank. Porsche and Henschel produced designs for Adolf Hitler to review at his East Prussian bunker, the Wolf's Lair in Rastenburg. After further reviews and trials, the Henschel design won, in part due to the Porsche design requiring larger amounts of copper, which at the time was a strategic material for the German war effort and in short supply. At number five, as I previously mentioned at number six, Henschel won the design and the subsequent contract for the Tiger, but it was Ferdinand Porsche who gave the tank its nickname, Tiger. At number four, it was thick, really, really thick. Frontal armour on the Tiger was 102mm compared to that of the Sherman at 76mm and the T-34 at 47mm. Albeit the Sherman and T-34 employed sloping armour, whereas the Tiger just relied on outright toughness and a flat facing frontal armour. Allied 75mm rounds and bazooka rockets were known to bounce clean off the armour and it wasn't until the Allies and Soviets upgunned their existing tanks or developed new ones 
along with the developments in armour-piercing rounds, that the Tiger became far more vulnerable to their weaponry. At number three, it had issues, lots of them. It was a mechanical nightmare in the field due to its complex, over-engineered design. On many occasions, crews had to abandon their Tigers as mechanical faults were just too complex to fix in the field under the adverse conditions of the Russian steppe or the relentless pressure forced on them in Europe by the Allies. At number two, like its namesake, it was a natural-born hunter. 88mm Camp Wagen Kanonen 36 could fire a 10.2 kilogram or 22 pound armor piercing projectile at 780 meters or 2,600 feet per second over an effective range of 3,000 meters and penetrate allied armor. This meant that the Tiger could ambush allied armor from range with ease whereas the allied and Soviet armor initially had to get far closer to stand any chance of eliminating their foe. And at number one, facts, figures, Dates and designs are all well and good, but the Tiger was more than the sum of its parts. Often, Allied reports of armour would specifically state that Tiger tanks had been sighted, regardless of if they were or if they were Panzer Mark IVs. The psychological effect on Allied soldiers far outweighed its effectiveness on the battlefield and far exceeded the numbers that rolled off the production lines in Castle. It gave the tank a real edge that no amount of armour or main gun can buy. Eventually tactics were developed by the Allies to hunt the big cat, but the presence it could command on the battlefield was felt up until the end of the war. Its legend has flowed through history, and that is especially true of its appearance on the big screen, making its first proper appearance in Kelly's Heroes. Now okay, they're really T-34s dressed up to look like Tigers, but for the time the producers did a great job. This carried on through the likes of Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers, through to the 2013 film Fury, which actually used the world's only working Tiger One, Tiger 131, from Bovingdon Tank Museum in the United Kingdom. Now, if you've enjoyed this top 10 rundown of the Tiger One, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you can, check out my video in the link above about one of the few surviving Tigers in Normandy, France. Thanks for watching World War II Wayfinder, and I'll see you all in the next one.